Happy New Year and welcome back to Flavor and Fiction. So even though this is my first video of 2020, I'm actually going to be reviewing a book that I read as part of my 2019 reading challenge. I got a little behind, I got a little under the weather, I don't know if you can hear it under, in, in my voice, but um, <clears throat> I always feel like when I'm sick I sound like Fozzie Bear. Waka waka waka. Anyway, um, so the book that I'm going to be reviewing, it was um, surprisingly great. I, I, say, I say that because after reading the back I just, it, it, I didn't think it was my type of book, but I was wrong. It was great and it fit the category of a book that takes place in a country that you've always wanted to visit which for me is South Korea. So I chose the book The Vegetarian by Han Kang. I actually thought it was going to be a very light read but I was I was wrong. <laughs> it, it was kind of heavy in some areas but it was such a beautiful and deep book. So since it's called The Vegetarian of course, I had to make a vegetarian dish. So since I was going to be in North Carolina visiting my parents, I told them that they can pick out a vegetarian recipe and I'll make it for flavor and fiction. So when I asked them what recipe they chose, my mom said shredded vegetables. And I was like, that's, that's not a thing. I mean, it, it's not like a real recipe, but my dad, my sister, everyone who had had these special shredded vegetables were like, it's delicious. You got to make it. You got to try it. Oh, it's so good. So, so I gave in and on New Year's Day, we made shredded vegetables. So I'll show you a bit of that in between talking about the book. So the main character of this book is called Young Hay. And the book is told in three parts from Young Hay's husband's perspective from her brother-in-law's perspective and then from her sister's perspective. So it starts from Young Hae's husband's perspective and he explains that one day his wife had a dream and she woke up and decided she could not eat meat anymore. And he thought it was just some fad and so he went along with it because really she didn't affect his life that much. She cooked for him. They didn't have any kids yet. Um, she was just a stay-at-home wife that was just there, which is what he wanted. He just wanted an accessory. So he didn't really care too much about the things she, she did personally that didn't affect him. Well, it started to affect him uh, because not only would she stop eating meat, but she stopped serving him meat as well. And, you know, he kind of rolled his eyes and put up with it for a while. But then she had certain behavior changes. Um, one of them was she stopped wearing a bra for some reason. And I know every woman is like, good for her. <laughs> um, but one day they went out to dinner with his coworkers and his boss. And it was a very important dinner. She takes off her coat and has on this thin shirt with like her nipple showing. And he's like mortified. Um, so that's, that sets off the downhill spiral for their relationship. Because then she graduates to basically becoming a vegan. Uh, so he gets upset and he eventually, he calls her sister. And then he calls her parents and they are mortified. So eventually it leads to an, an intervention. But by this point, she's already set in her ways. She has her own reasons, and I'll let you read the, um, for why she's doing this. And it doesn't matter that she's losing weight or... Um, a lot of other changes are happening. She is set. So when her, uh, the intervention does not work, her husband becomes more abusive. That eventually leads to the deterioration of her marriage. But it doesn't matter what happens to her on the outside, she is set on staying a vegetarian. Then in the second part, it jumps to the perspective from the brother-in-law, which to me was kind of weird. Like who, who cares about this brother-in-law? Um, he's an artist who was living off of his wife's success. Um, his wife had a shop, like a, a makeup shop or a beauty store that was successful. So she didn't even have to go into work every day. 
she could still be the traditional wife that was expected of her and br bring in the money and he could be an artist and you know do whatever he wanted and at first he was thanking his lucky stars that he didn't end up with young hay that he ended up with the sister who was more traditional and not embarrassing but after young hay becomes a vegetarian she becomes interesting in his eyes and he can't help but be inspired by her as an artist and as a man so i'm gonna leave that there to let you read to see what happens and then finally we get to the sister's perspective but before we talk about that i'm gonna insert the video here of uh <laughs> of me making these wonderful shredded vegetables okay so my mom's going to demonstrate how we shred these vegetables and what is this contraption First, called a shredder i guess <laughs> it's called a mandolin a mandolin. mandolin you attach your vegetable and slide it across the blade thank you this one has an arrow Pointing this way, so Thank you're you. going to Thank julienne you. the vegetable. Thank you. This don't, oh my god. <laughs> that thing has to be razor sharp <laughs> for it to be. Okay. Real work. As we slide it across, huh. we push this down gently. The real arm workout. Thank you. And the vegetables are. See, nice and simple, folks. Yeah, that, that's better than mine. Man. On to the next vegetable. Well, next vegetable is the zucchini. You can stand it up straight or slant it to get longer pieces. Next up, carrot. Just like this? Oh. Oh. Vivian, oh my it's God. okay. She's safe. She's safe. <laughs> my niece is concerned for me. She's being careful. Like that. Mm -hmm. Come on, I gotta go that way. Roll it over. All is well, Vivian. I'm watching my fingers. She's okay, baby. Okay, we have onions. What is that? Zucchini, raw spinach, carrots, green pepper, red pepper, and squash. So now we're going to watch the magic happen. Okay, next we're, next we're going to melt a stick of butter in our pan. So now we're going to dump our veggies into this pan of butter. We're going to turn the burner up a little bit and just mix. Okay. We add in a little pepper. There's so much noise happening. We add in a little. Oh, Lord. She's making noise on purpose. <laughs> Uh, just a little dash. Mix it all up again. And then, after we mix in our salt and pepper, we're going to cover it and come back and check on it and stir it up a little. Okay, so before we go back to the taste test, um, let's talk about the sister. The sister's name was Inhe, I believe. And I already told you a little bit about her. She had this successful shop. She was still the traditional mom who cooked and cleaned and kept care of the kids and did everything that was expected of her. And she just didn't understand why her sister could not get it together. But then we delve in a little deeper into their relationship. We find that Inhei has been a little jealous of her crazy sister all these years. Because her sister's personality has always been a little off, uh, less has been expected of her. And she can get away with doing crazy things like being a vegetarian, um, 
that in Hank would never be able to get away with because she was expected to be the perfect sister. I'm going to read to you one of my favorite quotes from the book. The feeling that she had never really lived in this world caught her by surprise. It was a fact. She had never lived, even as a child, as far back as she could remember. She had done nothing but endure. And I feel like a lot of women can relate to that, that you're expected to be this strong woman and not let anything rattle you. And this was a quote expressing the feelings of the sister, Inhe. And as she's thinking about how the outside world is looking at her sister, she realizes that she has cared too much about outside opinion um, to live her own life, to make her own decisions and not care what anyone else thinks. And it was a, a really beautiful testament to the relationship between sisters and about an inner revelation um, about your own path, about your own life. It was, it was really, it was deeper than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be such a light read, you guys. I was wrong, but it's worth it. It was beautiful. So the running theme throughout this book seems to be conformity. Everyone, every character in their own way has been pressured to conform to society, to what society wants them to be. And in their own way, it has crushed them and turned them into something that they didn't want to be. So it's um, looking at it from that perspective, Thinking about it after reading the book, it really shed new light on it. So that's just a little gem for you. Um, but let's get back to these shredded vegetables so you can see how they came out. Now they're about ready. We're going to add a dash of garlic powder. Okay, Ooh, it came out. Uh, seasoned everyone's plates with a little salt and pepper. So everyone has a little bit or a lot they claim on their plate. My parents, my sister, and my niece <laughs> making a face. <laughs> yes, she's so excited. Okay, everybody taste. I like it. You want some too? Let's cut some up. Mom, Dad? Okay, here goes. Good. Here's Vivian. Very good. Now that's the face of someone who loves it. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's good. She was expecting a high spot because that's what she was eating. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to play me in front of all the people. <laughs> you like it? So yeah, the general consensus seemed to be that I didn't make it as good as my mom made it. Um, but uh, everyone liked it and they ate it. Um... I thought it was good. It's not a meal to me. <laughs> if I had had some chicken on the side uh, and a baked potato would have been perfect. But um, I guess if you're a vegetarian named Young Hay, <laughs> you would love this dish, except for the butter. So I will put the recipe down below in the description. I'll also put a link to the book in case anyone wants to pick it up. So happy reading, happy eating. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. A kiss for the chef. Yeah. <laughs>